Hello friends, today we will discuss the design procedure of piston. Before we start the design procedure, let's having a look about the various parts of a piston. Now we are drawing a diagram for the piston. This is the center line of piston. This is the top of the piston or piston head and this depth is the top length and there are some grooves and these grooves are known as the grooves for the compression ring and grooves for the oil rings. There are the three grooves for compression ring, first, second and third and a next groove for our oil rings. That's why this groove is for our oil ring grooves in which there is some hole is provided. Similarly, this side is also the grooves, first groove for compression ring, second groove for compression ring, third groove for compression ring, first, second and third and next is your this is your oil ring or oil grooves first second third and this is our oil grooves now the piston is hollow that's why inside this piston this is the hollow portion and here we are having a some combustion chamber also in this piston then the cup shape is there this cup shape is also there this is the diagram of piston now we are hatching this a complete full sectional view that's why the full sectional view of this piston this portion is your top in this piston we can use a material whether cast iron or steel or aluminium alloy this portion is the this is the grooves for compression ring this is a groove for oil ring and this portion is the our piston head or crown portion is there and here this is a groove for the piston pin is there the hollow pin is there that's why this is the hollow pin and this pin is attached with a clip ring this is our clip rings now this portion is the bottom portion of our piston this bottom portion the 
this is our bottom portion of piston in this this portion is the thickness of this head thickness this is the uh, this thickness is our head thickness this portion is thickness of the head and this portion is the top length up to this this portion is the ring section and this portion of the piston is known as the skirt portion this is our piston pin or gazan pin up to this this portion from this to this this portion is also known as the piston barrel and if uh, the barriers notations we are using this is our thickness of this head then this is our width of this line this is the top line and this is a b1 a b1 notation this is the thickness also the ring thickness t2 thickness which is the axial thickness of this ring and this ring thickness is is t1 which is the radial thickness of this this barrel thickness is considered as t3 and this barrel thickness is considered as t4 the length of the pin in this bush or the portion of our gazan pin the portion of this gazan pin in the small end of our connecting rod this length is our alveolar length and this diameter is the diameter of the piston or bore diameter now for designing purpose let's having a design steps firstly we have to design the piston head or crown piston head or crown empirically we are using the formula of this thickness of this piston head th is equals to your according to the strength the formula is is 3 p into d square upon 16 under root 16 of sigma t we are using this formula and according to this formula we can calculate the value of thickness of this piston head in this this p is your maximum pressure or maximum gas pressure inside the cylinder this d is your diop piston or bore diameter this sigma t is your allowable tensile stress for piston material if you are using the cast iron then its value is different if you are using the steel if you are using the aluminium material to material we can find the value from design data book by the help of this we can calculate the thickness but if we are considering the heat transfer theory then the thickness of this piston head is given by h upon 12.56 multiplied by k the temperature difference tc minus te we can also calculate the thickness on the basis of this heat transfer and on the basis of the strength in this formula the h is your heat transfer and 
the value of this heat transfer is calculated by the formula of C multiplied by HCV higher calorific value of the fuel multiplied by the M mass flow rate of the fuel per per unit BP and multiplied by the BP brake power. In this, this C is considered as a constant and mostly the value of this C is considered as 0 0.05. This is the higher calorific value, fuel to fuel it is different for petrol and diesel, mass flow rate per unit BP and brake power developed by the engine. By the help of this equation, we can calculate the value of the H and by putting the value in this equation, we can calculate the pH. In this formula, this K is your conductivity factor and according to the material to material, its value can be calculated from the design data book. This TC is the center temperature of this piston. This TE is the ash temperature of this piston. This difference is different for a different material. It is different for cast iron and different for aluminium. This data can be calculated from the design data book. And on the basis of this equation number first and second, we have to choose the thickness. That's why the larger value of this TH is adopted. Calculated on the basis of the strength and on the basis of the heat transfer and the larger is adopted. Secondly, if the value of this TH is greater than 6 mm, then some ribs are required. Here is the ribs. We are using the ribs if the value of this is then we are using this. This ribs are used. This portion is the rib and this is the rib thickness TR and if we are using this ribs then we have to calculate the value of this TR and the value of this TR based on the calculated value of this TH the larger value of this TH it may be one third to the one and half of the TH. This is the complete process of designing the piston head. After the designing of the piston head, the second step for our designing is to design the piston rings or the compression rings which we are using. The second step is your piston rings. If we are considering if this is a piston ring then if this is the top view of a piston ring then this thickness is your T1 thickness. This thickness is the T1 thickness and this is known as the gap or free end gap in this piston rings and if we are plotting the side view then we can also find a thickness in this side view and this thickness is your T2 thickness. This is our T2 thickness. And if we are considering that this is our ring, then this is the side, this is our top and this is the gap. Now we have to calculate the value of this. To calculate this radial thickness and this is equal to your under root of 3. Pw d square upon sigma t. In this, this d is the diameter of this piston. This sigma t is the allowable stress for this ring material. And this Pw is the pressure on the cylinder wall. The pressure on the cylinder wall is less than the maximum pressure inside the cylinder. Then second, we have to calculate this thickness T2 which is the axial thickness, this T2 thickness and this thickness is based on this D upon 10 into NR. 
where this D is the diameter of this piston, this NR is the number of rings. The number of rings and we can calculate the value of this T2 which is the axial thickness. This is the radial thickness, this is the axial thickness. Then we can calculate this top length. This top length is based on this TH, that's why it may be equal to this. It may be equal to this or it may be a 20% greater than this. This is the formula for the top length. We can calculate this top length. This other length thickness, this is the other length thickness, this is the top length, this is the other, other length thickness B2. We can calculate this P2 which is equals to 0.75 or equals to this T2. It is based on this T2. That's why it may be of 75% of this or equal to T2. And if the rings are free, then we can also calculate the, the free end gap. And this free end gap should be equal to your 3.5 times of the T1 to 4 times of the T1. By the help of these calculations, we can design our piston rings and then this top lengths and this other length widths. After this ring, we have to design this piston barrel. This is our piston barrel and in this piston barrel, we have to design the thickness T3 and T4. The third step of our design is piston barrel design and in this piston barrel design we have to calculate only this thickness T3 and it means the upper end thickness and the bottom end thickness of this piston barrel empirically this T3 based on this T1 that's why this value may be 0 0.03 of D plus T1 plus some clearance which is your 4.9 and the whole the value of this thickness is in ml. Also, we can calculate this T4. This is the T4. This T4 is based on this T3. It may be a 25% to 35% of this. That's why we can say it is the 0.25 times of T3 to 0.35 times of T3. On the basis of the T3, we can calculate this piston barrel thickness can be calculated. Now next step is design of this skirt. Piston skirt. This portion, the lower portion below this ring section is known as the skirt portion. Now we have to find out the length of this skirt section. Let us, we are considering that this length is your L length. Then we know that the total maximum pressure which is equal to maximum pressure or we can say it is a maximum load and this maximum load is due to the pressure inside this multiplied by the area of this pi by 4 d square this P is your maximum pressure inside the cylinder we can calculate the maximum load on this piston. But when we are designing this skirt, then this skirt bear a load, which load is known as the maximum side thrust. Then the maximum side thrust, which we are taking R, which is equal to 1 by 10th of this maximum load. We can calculate from here the maximum side thrust. The side thrust is considered in this way that if this is our piston and this is the skirt portion, then when the piston is moving in this fashion, then there may be a some bearing failure of this piston in this skirt portion. That's why we are using the formula for the bearing failure and formula for the bearing failure is the, this is the bearing load, axial thrust on this and it will fail in this manner. This is the bearing failure. Due to this, there may be an enlargement in the size. It means the side thrust is this R. And if you are considering the 
equation for this side thrust then this is equals to your bearing pressure on this skirt multiplied by the projected area of this skirt portion and the projected area of this skirt portion is this is the projected area and this is equals to your d into length that's why this is equals to d into l by putting the value r in this equation we can calculate the length of the skirt the length of the skirts calculated on the basis of these two formula and if we have the value of this skirt we can calculate the total length which is the l we can calculate this total length of the piston this is the l and that's why the total length is equals to your skirt length plus this ring section and plus top length by adding all these three we can calculate the total length of the piston course the next step of our design is designing of this piston pin or also known as a gusset pin now we know that this portion of the gusset pin is attached with the in this piston with the small end of the connecting rod the designing step of our piston pin or also known as a gusset pin if we are considering that this is our pin let us considering that this is our piston pin and having a hollow section that's why this this portion is there and this length l1 length this l1 length is in the bush of or the small end of the connecting rod and this total length is the l2 length this is the inner diameter and this is the outer diameter of this gusset pin this pin is a hollow pin now if it, if considering that this is the center line of this pin then we know that the total load acting on this piston is acting on this pin also that's why the load acting on this is the t and we know that the total load on this is your maximum pressure inside this and multiplied by this area this is the load on pin but due to this load the portion of the pin in this bush or in this small end of this connecting rod if this is attached in this then there may be also a bearing failure of this that's why we are using the bearing failure then we know that the total load or bearing load which is equals to your bearing pressure inside this multiply by the projected area and if this is our pin then the projected area is equals to your this is area d into l and in this case this is the outer d not into l1 we have the value of this p we have the value of this and we have the value of this empirically in this we can consider this l1 empirically 0.45 of d to 0.5 of d any one of them we can consider and we can calculate the outer diameter of the pin from this equation and on the basis of this outer diameter we can also calculate the inner diameter of the pin and this inner diameter of the pin is the 60% of this outer diameter of the pin empirically we can calculate the value of this now the complete design of our pin we have the value of this outer diameter have value of this inner diameter value of this l1 now checking this length l2 it means we have to check this pin in the bending also and that's why checking this pin in the bending check in bending checking in bending we have all the design but now we have to check it in bending this length is l2 if you are considering that this p load then up to this this is the uniformly distributed load up to this uniformly distributed load and 
on this ends it is a simply supported that's why we can say this reaction is p by 2 and this reaction is p by 2 but in this section up to this l1 l1 there is a uniformly distributed load that's why if you are using using the bending equation then we know that from bending equation maximum bending moment upon minimum moment of inertia it is to your bending stress of the pin upon the y it is the maximum distance from the neutral axis and if you are plotting this then from the side view it is clear that it is a hollow section this type of the section is there that's why this is the neutral axis and it and we can calculate the value for this hollow section also then we can calculate the maximum bending moment from this loading conditions we know that the maximum bending moment is equal to your bending moment of this side and this is our uniformly distributed load up to this length l by 2 and always acting at the cg of this that's why this p is the total load but it is distributed over this length that's why the value of this is equal to your p upon l1 but it is only considered for this length then the total load is your l1 by 2 acting at the cg of this this load is acting in this direction and this load is acting in this direction now taking the moment of this this minus this then p by 2 multiply by this distance and this distance is equals to your l2 by 2 minus this load which is equals to your p by l1 into l1 by 2 and multiply by l1 by 4 the cg of this l1 by 2 is got half of this and by this equation we can calculate the bending moment and for calculation of this l2 and l1 in terms of this d and and the relationship between this l1 and l2 we can also find the relationship between this this total distance is your diameter this is l1 that's why this distance is total d minus l1 and half is added here and half is added here that's why we can say uh, the total distance is shifted by l1 plus d minus l1 divided by 2 we can calculate the relationship between this l1 and l2 by the help of this by the adding the value of, in terms of diameter we can calculate l1 and l2 that means there is a relationship by putting the value in this equation we can calculate the maximum bending moment and then calculation of this i we can calculate the i of this section this is the hollow section that's why i is equals to 5 by 64 into d after 4 minus d in a 4 and the maximum distance is your d not by 2 by the putting the value of this m i and y in this equation we can calculate the value of this stress developed and checking this stress whether it is the less than of the stress of the pin material if the value of this induced stress is less than the stress of the pin material we can say our design is safe so friends this is the complete procedure of the design of piston thank you